Year 10 and 11, welcome to your quick analysis of the prints in Romeo and Juliet in preparation for your English literature exam. The Prince of Verona wants peace then, but he can't restrain the violence between the Montagues and the Capulets. If the Prince can't do anything about the feud, it means that the law, which the Prince metaphorically represents, is powerless against the passions of hate and of love. And please don't forget the Prince, whilst he does represent law, he is also working against fate. Every, everything really in this play is working against this idea of fate and something that is destined to happen. In your deeper analysis, he is the voice of conflicted law and also the conscience or the missing conscience of the adult characters. Because don't forget, Tybalt, Mercutio and Romeo all act in haste at certain points in the play um, that lead to severe consequences when they act without conscience, without thought, without considering um, the consequences of their actions. If we add a little bit more detail then, the prince's name is invokes Aeschylus, the Greek playwright, whose trilogy Orestia describes the destruction of the house of Atreus, a Greek patriarch. All right, so we've got this idea of the destruction of a house. Now, the prince authors the law, doesn't he? He authors the law in Verona, and he authors the law that destroys the Capulet and Montague households as well. It is punishing of the street brawls with death. The prince's attempted use of discipline, however, is too extreme. And he says it's in, the it's in a response to three civil brawls bred of an airy word. And these airy words obviously bring a weighty punishment. So by linking the prince to this Greek playwright and this trilogy of Orestia, where a household is destroyed, we have this link to the households of the Capulets and the Montagues, which are inevitably destroyed by the end of the play. Because we have the loss of Romeo, we have the loss of Juliet, Tybalt, Mercutio, Paris. Law and mercy. It appears that the prince is experiencing his own inner conflict between law and mercy. In his last appearance at the end of the play, he has many questions. What misadventure is so early up? What fear is this that startles in our ears? And his state of confusion mirrors his own conscience. So his earlier announcement kills not only Mercutio but his other kinsman, Paris, who dies at Romeo's hand. Seal up the mouth of outrage for a while, he declares, trying to comprehend his responsibility. His law has killed one person and his mercy has killed two others. So we have to remember that actually the prince is conflicted between law and mercy and he can't actually win in this play because, as we said earlier, it links back to the feud and it links back to fate. Um, and, and almost this idea that the, pa the paths and lives of the character, characters have been destined um, by pardoning Romeo in the sense that he banishes him rather than killing him. Romeo comes back then to kill Paris. So the prince is conflicted. In terms of a timeline, in Act 1, Scene 1, he was furious at another Montague and Capula brawl disturbing the peace and he orders that from now on, anyone who fights in public will be put to death. Your quote, rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profane as if this neighbour stands still. Qu quick translation, you rebels, enemies of the peace, men who turn their weapons against their own neighbours. So in this quotation, if we were analysing it, look at that, enemies to peace, rebellious subjects. This idea that they turn on their neighbours. Will they not hear? What ho, you mean, you beasts? So again, they won't listen to me, you men, you beasts. And, and, and he calls them beasts and that in, that's interesting because it's this idea that they aren't following the laws of Verona and that makes them not men, but actually animals. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall be the forfeit of the peace. So straightforward, if you ever cause a disturbance on our streets again, you'll pay for it with your lives. That is the law that I was referring to earlier. So this is him um, trying to put into place very extreme punishments. Your lives shall be the forfeit of the peace. In Act 3, Scene 1, despite his warning, the prince discovers that the Montagues and Capulets have been fighting again. This time two men are dead. One of them is the prince's cousin. Can we remember that Mercutio is the prince's cousin? And we get this quote. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding. 
The prince rules that since Tybalt started the fight and killed Mercutio, there are extenuating circumstances for Romeo killing Tybalt. So he then condemns Romeo to banishment rather than death. And this is where he shows his mercy. Now, but if you look, my blood does lie bleeding. So we realise that the feud has a personal interest in terms of the prince because he's related to Mercutio. And just to put that there for you, down the left is Shakespeare, down the right is the translation. So he says for that if offence immediately we do exile him hence again this is fate as well linked to law and linked to the prince because Romeo is exiled to Mantua Romeo then has to come back to see Juliet my blood for your rude brawls doth lie a bleeding but I'll immerse you with a strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine so look at Mercutio was my relative he lies dead because of your bloody feud I'll punish you so harshly that you'll regret causing me this loss so that's an interesting quote that we might want to try and remember. You shall repent the loss of mine. So because he's related to Mercutio and because this feud has now taken on a more personal interest, we get the prince again attempting to punish. And yes, it's a little bit more mercy this time because he banishes Romeo. Remember, in terms of fate, what I mean is because Romeo is banished, Friar Lawrence attempts to send him a letter to explain that Juliet has taken this poison that makes her appear dead. Um, and therefore he has to send uh, Friar John to give Romeo this letter and the, and the letter never gets there because of, because of a plague. So again, um, this is all linked to fate and Act 3, Scene 1 is the turning point, isn't it? If you want anything else from that speech you've got, I will be deaf to pleading and excuses. So he's not going to listen. No tears, no prayers shall purchase out abuses. So they, they, they can't get away with the punishment and they can't get away with, with the consequences of their actions. Again, this is the conscience coming into play. Um, as I mentioned, the exile of Romeo, which is massively important. Let Romeo hence in here else when he's found that hour is his last. So again, if Romeo returns, he will be killed. Carrying on with the timeline, we get to the end of the play then. So the prince comes into the Capulet tomb and finds Romeo and Juliet lying dead in each other's arms. He pronounces that the tragic deaths of the two lovers are a punishment for the hatred that the Montague and Capulet families have allowed to flourish. In the matter... Of Romeo and Juliet's death, the prince rules, some shall be pardoned and some punished. He suggests that the friar will be pardoned. The fate of the nurse and other participants is unclear. At the same time, the prince says the pitiful deaths of Romeo and Juliet are themselves a heavy burden that everyone must bear. In that sense, he says, all are punished. So again, when we're talking about uh, mercy look at some shall be pardoned and some punished it's it, it is this idea that the prince is conflicted capulet montague see what a scourge is laid upon your hate so he's saying shouting at the capulets and the montagues do you see what a great evil results from your hate look what you've done well we've all lost family members here and this links us back to the prologue Heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. So this and this idea that Romeo and Juliet's love actually has led to their own deaths. Key quote, all are punished. We might look at the word all, we might look at the word punished here. And he finishes with, a glooming peace this morning with it brings the sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. So this, I suppose, um, almost acts as a mirror image of the prologue. Look, glooming peace. Peace is obviously gloomy because of the deaths that they've suffered. The sun will not show his head personification of, of this darkness. I've already done, done pardoned and punished. Um, and you might want to look at um, meter as well when analysing the prince here. It, it is very, very similar to the prologue. Um, and just a little bit 
a little bit more on the prints and then I'm done. It was just a quick video. The ultimate irony is that even the prince has learned very little from the tragedy. He speaks as a conscience for the adults. See what a scourge is laid upon your hate. And for himself, I for winking at your discords too have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. But he goes on to say some shall be pardoned and some punished. Perhaps he still believes mercy and law go hand in hand with little difference between them. So as I did mention earlier, yes, he's the conscience of the adult characters, but he is conflicted between law and mercy. And by the end of the play, very tragically, he hasn't learned the difference. As I said earlier, some are pardoned and some are punished. Why isn't everybody punished or why isn't everybody pardoned? Why is it different? Why is there sometimes a law to play and sometimes mercy? So remember, initially in the play, um, he deems that anyone fighting will be punished by death and then he changes it to banishment. OK, so a couple of things. The prince metaphorically represents law. He acts as the conscience for the adult characters. He himself is conflicted between mercy and law. He is related to Mercutio, so the feud takes on a more personal aspect for the prince. He attempts to punish the families. He is in one instance too extreme and in the other instance too lenient. I suppose this is the power of the feud and the power of fate working against all the characters. I hope this video has been useful. It was just quick revision on the prince and massive good luck in your English literature exam. If you need any of my other videos on Romeo and Juliet, please check out my playlist. Just type in Stacey Ray. S-T-A-C-E-Y and Ray is R-A-A-Y and good luck.